Welcome to another episode of the Wondering Watercolor. Today we're painting the fifth page of the Ocean Life watercolor coloring book that I make. Let's get started. So this is the fifth page. It's um, basically just a manatee um, that's just swimming around in some water. And as always, you want to make sure that you have your brush, any brush works, a uh, place to mix your colors, any any porcelain plate. Uh, this is just a soap dish that I use. Um, you can use, um, honestly, you can use a plate of any kind, uh, glass, porcelain, plastic, really. Um, I just really like these ones because they have a little lip on them so that it doesn't... Um, fall off when you're painting and then these are my paints you can honestly use any paint um I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to a very extensive blog post that i wrote about all kinds of um supplies and all the different supplies that i use and then as always you want to make sure that you have a paper towel or a rag um, obviously i've really abused and overused this one i should get a new one by now and then just two jars of water I have them on the side of my uh, camera here. And that's really it. Um, you're pretty much ready to start painting. Uh, also, something else that's really good to have is just a scrap piece of paper. Um, and it doesn't even really have to be uh, watercolor paper, just something that you can kind of just uh, either dry off your brush or um, run some color tests if you just want to kind of see how something's looking um okay so first thing we'll do is we're going to mix up some gray now you you can just go ahead and directly get some black and then just dilute it with water but it'll look more synthetic which is fine depending on what you're painting so a lot of the times when i'm painting something organic like animals plant life uh, just anything organic I, I tend to manually kind of mix my brown or uh, my gray using brown and blue because um, it can give you a kind of like a nice more natural earthy gray uh, if you just go directly for uh, black and then just dilute that you can get some really nice grays but they look very synthetic it, it looks like it's perfect for machinery or uh, cityscapes um, either way you can you can do that too or you can just mix up some black with some blue just to give it a little bit of a tint uh, it's just that I always like how it's just it, it looks much more natural like I'll give you an example so this is what this one looks like the one that we've just mixed up and And you can tell I've mixed up a lot of it. So what I'm going to do is down here, I'm going to dilute it a bit. We're going to do it in two layers. The first layer, we're just going to cover everything. And we'll go. that'll be with the lighter layer. And then after that dries, we can go in and add the shading on the bottom. This is one of the easier pages. I know the other pages that we've painted so far have been um, much more difficult in this book. And so I, I usually try to throw in like two or three pages per book that are a little simpler, a little quicker, not as complex. And so now that we have this mixed up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lay that in like this on the bottom. And then just go all the way through. It's just a flat wash. And I'm just going to cover this fin over here completely. And then I'm just going to rinse off my brush. So there's no more paint. It's just water on my brush. I'm just going to pull it up towards the towards the top. And it'll, it'll fade it out. And make it look nice and faded. Kind of give that, that appearance. Um, that manatees... If you ever look at pictures of manatees while they're underwater... Well, they're more than likely the pictures you're going to look at. They're underwater. Um, and there's, there's this really soft gradation. And then 
I'm just gonna grab blue, a little bit of blue. It, honestly, it doesn't matter what kind of blue you use, any blue works. And then, but you want it to be very diluted. So I'm using a lot of water, a little bit of blue, and I'm just gonna also touch up on the top here, just a little bit like that. Um, because a lot of times with manatees or sea creatures in general, you see there's kind of like a, almost like an atmospheric reflection of the water. It's just like, that's all around them. And so that's what we're doing here. Okay, perfect. We're just going to let that dry. And we have our... These are basically the colors that we'll be using for the manatee. So we don't really need any other colors to mix up for the little creature here. But what we will do is... Um, we'll mix up some of the colors in the environment. Now, usually whenever I have a painting where it's a very large object and then there's an environment surrounding it, um, I try to put in all the detail and rendering on the object and then just kind of do a loose suggestion of the surroundings. So that's what we'll do here. We'll grab a little bit of green, a little bit of green, any green, whatever green you have in your palette works fine. But we are also going to throw in a little bit of blue. So just to try to get it more kind of like a blue-green, something that maybe a seaweed would look like, which is kind of like what we have down here. And what we'll do, this, this looks like a pretty good color for that. What we'll do is we're just going to just kind of loosely fill that in just a little bit like that and you can see I'm not being very careful about it at all um, kind of like you want to give that appearance that underwater objects often get where they're they're kind of blurry a little bit like you can kind of understand you get the general gist of where the object is but there's a little bit of like a distortion just because it's underwater and I'm gonna maybe pick up a little bit of the water over here and then we're just gonna leave that like that. And that, that looks fine. Um, the only thing is it will dry lighter, which is totally fine. But now, for the, the space around the manatee, we wanna get blue and you can see this time I'm using a different kind of blue um, so usually most palettes will come with one or more um, blue and uh, if it doesn't if yours doesn't just add just add a little bit of purple or green um, or red just to kind of shift the tones a little bit um, because you want it to be a rather different color than the one that's on the top here you, you want it to be contrasting enough so that it stands out. And if your paint starts to mix in like that, like mine, just grab your paper towel or rag, whatever you have, and just kind of go in between like that. That's a little trick there. Okay, let me see. So, I like how this mixture looks right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in like this, all around, kind of like an outline around the manatee. And I'm working just on the bottom right now, just underneath the manatee. Okay. And after I put, put in all of that, I'm going to rinse off my brush and then just, I didn't rinse it off enough. I'm going to rinse off my brush and then just kind of get the water and bring it out like that and then kind of blend it in with the edge maybe overlap a little bit with the seaweed there and you can see how it creates like it bleeds into one another it creates a little bit of blurriness it's like a loose representation of what it would look like uh, underwater okay so we, we have that all in there that's perfect let's go over the top of the manatee now. The top should be easier. 
I'm just gonna go like this. And then just take your time. There's no need to rush. I'm going over the top. Trying to avoid going inside of the object. And just like that. I'm gonna stop right around there. And then do the same thing. I just completely rinse off my brush. And then just keep water on the brush. And then spread it out like that. And you can see down here, uh, we're getting a little bit of like disproportionate mixing. And what we can do is we can add a little more paint down here like that and paint over it and rinse off my brush. And I'm gonna dry it off so it's just a moist brush, it's not very wet. And I'm just gonna kinda use that to blend it in just to fix that a little bit right there. There's a little bit right here too, but it doesn't look as bad, so I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And then I'm gonna go back to the other colors that we mixed. And so this time we're gonna go in with the much darker gray that we mixed earlier. Now you can see a lot of the times whenever um, I go back and forth from colors or whenever I'm mixing up a new one, I spend a lot of time actually mixing them in. Part of the reason for that is because the more you do that, the less the chances of this developing, just because the it helps to make sure that the pigment that's in the paint isn't sticking together, so it actually spreads more evenly and easily. Um, so if you're just going directly from the paint to the um, paper, it gives you a greater chance of getting uneven layers of paint. Okay, so now this is much, much darker. You can see we're gonna go in just like that on the bottom and then like that. And then over here, like that. And then a little bit over here just to show the folds in the face, like that, a little bit under the chin, definitely over here where the upper lip is, just because of how large it is, creates more of a shadow. And then rinse off my brush completely, and then uh, dry it a little bit so it, it, ha it still has a good amount of moisture on it, and then just kind of fade in that edge. Fade the edge. And you can also leave a little more defined edge if you want to. And then I'm gonna dry off my brush more just to help pick up some of that color to make it a little more faded. Like that. Like that. If you want to, you can leave the shadows a little more defined. That's just a style choice. You don't have to, but there's always an option. And next I'm gonna go in on the little fins here like that. And this one is actually going to be mostly in shade just because it's kind of underneath. Okay, rinse off my brush, dry it off, same thing. Let me get the edge there. Like that. And on the edge here, and just kind of feather it just ever so slightly. And then I'm just gonna cover in this edge. I realized I was, I was probably a little cautious of the edge there and I didn't want to get it into the blue. So I'm just gonna go in and fill that in because it looks a little messy. I'm just gonna go in just like that. And also just kind of like straighten, strengthen that darker undertone there. Like that. And it creates more of a shadow. 
gives you the idea that the light is coming through the water on top of the manatee. And then a little bit there, a little more there. I just want to punch up those contrasts a little more like that. Where the nostril is. Okay. And then at this point, we can actually go in and get just some straight black. It's like just directly from your palette. And what you want to do is if you use the very tip of the brush, you can see how you can get very fine lines and points. And that's what we're going to do for coloring in the, the eyeball. So just a little bit carefully going in, just using the very tip of whatever brush you're using. And just coloring it in like that. Just very slowly taking your time. Yeah, that's perfect. And I'm probably just gonna mix in this little bit of um, black here with the with the dark gray that I had. And the last thing that we will we'll do for this one is you see how the fin over here, the one that's the most in the for the closest to the foreground, uh, gets a little lost with the underbelly of the manatee. So what we want to do to remedy that is we are actually going to add more contrast on the underbelly. So for example, I'm just going to go ahead and go like this. Like that. And then go around it. I'm not going to go inside of the fin. And then just add more like that. Maybe add a little more over here to show more contrast. You want it to look a little more consistent. So we are going to go all the way back here and just kind of pull it in like that. I use contrast mainly to show definition. There's different schools of thought on that. That's just what I like to do. And I'm going to rinse off my brush completely. And then I'm um, just going to leave it a little moist so that I can pull out that color just a little bit like that and also around the edges right here just a little bit I'm gonna feather it out because we don't want it to be too um, defined okay I'm just gonna step back a moment okay I think we're done Okay, so that looks great. Um, if you have any questions, just leave a comment, send me a message, email me, whatever works. And I will see you on the next one.